Good morning. I want to welcome you back here to our Family Friday at First Baptist Bonham. If you haven't joined us before, welcome. If you have, I'm glad that you're back with us. Uh, today, we're going to be continuing with our discussion on your family and technology. But a couple of reminders before we get into that. Number one is <clears throat> that you can help us out uh, by simply sharing this this video. So if you're going to watch this live or if you watch it later on our Facebook page or perhaps on somebody else's Facebook page, it's really, really helpful to us if you will go right below the video and hit share and share it to uh, to your own news feed, your own page there. And that, uh, that helps more people see our content. Also, if you haven't liked our Facebook page, take a moment to, to do that. You can just click our name if you're not on our page, if you're on our page already. Then up at the top, it just simply says, like this page. And then there's also, right beside that, there is uh, an option uh, that gives you the idea of following. So if you click click that and then hit see first, you'll be able to, to see all of our content when it's published, whether that's these Facebook live videos or whether it's an uh, announcement about church or some event that we're having. So if you'll do those couple things, that would be very, very helpful to us. Now, today is our first day with a new time. We were doing this at noon, but we're going to try to start doing it around this time, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning on Friday, simply because more people are watching it after the live broadcast than before or during the live broadcast. And so um, this will give <clears throat> more people the chance uh, to see it throughout the day, just kind of how Facebook works. So uh, we're going to try to do it a little bit earlier. So today we're going to talk about that there are good reasons to expose your kids to technology and good reasons to protect them from it. And so today I'm going to give you some of the possibilities, but also the problems of technology, especially as it relates to kids and teens. And, uh, and give you a few tips on how we can uh, redeem technology for the glory of God rather than to be ruled by it in some form or fashion. Now, remember, we were splitting this into three parts. So last week, we kind of talked about a biblical viewpoint of technology, kind of to set the foundation for our discussion. This week, we're going to talk about some of those problems and possibilities and then some tips. And then next week, we're gonna, I'm going to try to really be more practical about what are some particular programs you can use to uh, limit uh, limit content or to limit screen time and things like this. So uh, let's let's kind of jump into it and uh, we'll talk here. So I'm not going to rehash all that we did last week, but I am going to remind you and begin with uh, with this point that technology is ubiquitous. So we have an opportunity to respond to that. We can <clears throat> either try to avoid it, right? We can run away. Um, we can run headlong into it and just engage with it uncritically, or we can learn to run wisely in the midst of a tech-filled world. And the last thing is what I want to encourage us to do, because really the first is not truly an option, because even if we wanted to avoid technology uh, personally, the chances of us being able to do that in terms of our professional lives or in terms of our social lives is highly unlikely, because most jobs assume and expect engagement with especially digital technology, computing technology. Most communication is built on some form of technology, and most educational things are built on it as well. So it's really unlikely that we're going to be able to avoid it. But we can, um, we can make sure that we don't uncritically engage and learn to run wisely, and I think we especially want to teach our kids how to how to engage in a world that's not going to that's always going to have technology in it especially digital technology. So, I'm going to do today is give you a few as I said possibilities and problems. Now, these are not comprehensive lists in any form or fashion, but just some of the more common ones that I either kind of brainstormed or in the research for this. And so, I'm sure you can you can think of more so uh, feel free if you want to comment on that, you can do that as well. Uh, but um, but these are just a few of the kind of more common and typical ones. So what are some of the possibilities? What are some of the good things <clears throat> about about technology, particular digital technology? Well, I think one is that today we have unprecedented access to knowledge uh, that we didn't have. I remember growing up, right, to, to have a, a copy or a set of encyclopedias was a, a big deal. And these days, right, there's, there's really no such thing as that because everything is right at our fingertips, which is really good because we have access to information that can help us make decisions, that can teach us things that we otherwise may never have been exposed to. Um, and so unprecedented access, access to knowledge is, is a good thing. 
Um, the only bad thing about that, though, is that sometimes there's been studies to show that we don't remember things as well as we used to because we can just Google it, right? You can say, hey, Siri, or hey, Google, right? What is the name of this, or what is the nature of that? So, um, like anything, there are ups and downs, but we do have unprecedented access to knowledge. Another th a good thing about technology, especially computing technology, digital technology, is that it does provide connections with people that we might not otherwise be able to have, right? I mean, years and years ago, if you wanted to contact somebody before the invention of the telephone or the telegraph, you would have to write them a letter, right? And you'd have to wait time. And then, of course, other things came about with the telephone and then, of course, television. And now, right, I mean, you just pull your phone out of your pocket and you hit FaceTime or Facebook mess, uh, Messenger or something like that, and boom, you're connected. And this is a, a big help to our family because we don't live close to our family, so our children still get to see their grandparents and relate to them, and they can watch ball games and, and all kinds of different things. So there is, a, there is a possibility to increase connection, especially over long distances. Um, this has related to the sharing of the gospel and the spreading of the message of Christ around the world in ways that we, we couldn't have done before. As I mentioned, most jobs and most professions utilize technology, digital technology, especially in some particular way. And so I think exposing our kids to this is a helpful uh, thing to them so that prepares them for uh, productive uh, work and then, of course, a member in society and things like this. Technology has also been correlated to uh, confidence in academic and in workplace um, activity. So the, the greater level of technological awareness and familiarity you have, the more likely you are to feel comfortable in your job and in engaging in academic affairs. And then there are also positive correlations between cognitive development, language development, um, problem solving skills and things like this but in many ways there are also studies that correlate screen time uh, to a, a depression of those things like missing and I think I'm going to give you a, a hint here I think more than not it's not the tech itself it's the content and the nature of that exposure so those are some of the possibilities but there are also some some problems and I think one of the main ones is dominance over life I'm going to give you a few statistics here these all come from a study that and a, a few studies that were um, used by the American Academy of Pediatrics back around 2010 I'm sure there's probably some updated numbers but these were the easiest ones to find and, and I think they are indicative of, of even today um, so for instance the American Academy of Pediatrics considers exposure to media to be a possible health concern and suggested that they asked parents especially of younger children, about screen time and, uh, and exposure to different sorts of media and things like this. So I'm going to read you a couple of statistics here just to kind of give you an idea of how easy it is to let this dominate your life. So one statistic cited by the American Academy of Pediatrics says that by age three, almost one-third of children have a television in their bedroom. So by age three, they have access, unlimited, unfiltered access to a television in their bedroom. This jumped up to 70% for American teenagers. So, in addition, at least one-third of the nation's teenagers had a computer with internet access in their bedroom, and that's even more ubiquitous now since they have a computer in their pocket. Um, so, again, back in 2010, the Academy have found that children and adolescents spent more time engaged in various media activities than they did in any other activity except for sleeping, which is quite astounding. Uh, the Kaiser family, who published one of these studies, estimated that children and teenagers spend more than seven hours a day engaged in various media, um, meaning that when these children and young people grow up to about the age of 70, they will have spent the equivalent of seven to 10 years of their lives watching television or engaging in some sort of screen time. And so these are pretty astounding numbers. In fact, um, the number of American homes, average American homes, um, with television outnumbers the homes with indoor plumbing. The average American home has four televisions, one DVR, uh, up to three DVD or Blu-ray players, two CD players, two radios, two computers, and two video game units. And so, well, I, I don't tell you this to be alarming, but to just let you know that it's very easy for technology 
to dominate life. And so this is one of the real dangers. It becomes an idol. And we, we fail to understand that it may actually be enslaving us rather than us using it. As such, it can often become a barrier to real connection, right? And you'll often hear complaints about this from parents, or maybe you've even voiced a complaint where, you know, especially if a teenage child, right, they don't talk to you, they're always looking at their phone, things like this. And so it can be a barrier to real, real connection, to fast friendships that are not, uh, not always very good. Of course, there always exists, uh, especially online, the opportunity for kids to be harmed, abused, and bullied. And so this is a very real... Now, of course, these things aren't limited to technology, but it's just another avenue in which one person can take advantage and victimize another person. And there are <clears throat> many emotional issues that seem to be either intensified uh, by, by media, by social media especially, and by technology, things like comparison, um, comparing yourself to another and, and feeling uh, bad, making a poor self-judgment. Isolation, which is odd because it's all about connection, but you can feel even more isolated because you're not making a very real connection. And depression, other things like this. Now, I want to remind you that the, the these things are not necessarily inherent to technology, but to how people use technology, right? Just like, you know, if you have a car, a car can be a very helpful tool for to get you from one place to the other, but if you step behind the wheel... Um, and you're inebriated or you're not ready or you're sleepy, right? That car turns from a tool to get you from one place to the other to a tool that can have very serious consequences and even death. And so it's not the thing itself that's the problem. It's the use to which we put it. So I'm going to give you a couple of, um, a couple of uh, action steps here so that we will you know, be able to to engage with this in, uh, in helpful ways. So a couple of things that I wanted to, to make known to you are that we learn to pray at the beginning, right? Pray for discernment and the, and the knowledge that we need from the Spirit and from the Word to know how to use technology in a way that actually does glorify God. And so we don't want to just say, oh, well, we've got it all together, right? We need an answer from the Lord uh, and his aid, his his help by the Spirit to learn what to do with respect to these things, and not just technology, but anything in life, right? It ought to begin with a prayer for discernment so that we know what the will of the Lord is. Second, I would say that unfiltered and unlimited access to technology, especially uh, to internet and social media for your kids and especially your teens, should be out of the question, right? There really should, is no good reason uh, for your child to have unfiltered and unlimited access to various forms of media without your oversight. Um, there are very few good things that come from that, and there are lots of really bad things, like exposure to content that you would not want your children to be exposed to. And I'm going to give you a little bit of information about that uh, next week as well. Also, I think this what this means is we want to set limits uh, on both time and content and control access to those things, especially doing that early. The earlier you do it, the easier it is to make that a habit and a part of your media and, and technology consumption. Um, and this also means progressive exposure to these things, right? So don't just hand, don't just hand your, your three or four-year-old your iPad and say, hey, do whatever, right? I mean, you need to, you're the parent, right? Parents are the ones who put TVs in kids' bedrooms. Parents are the ones who hand devices to their children. Children don't usually don't have access to those things without parental oversight and control, so we need to, to be involved in that. So don't be afraid to supervise and check up on what your children are doing. If they feel like that's an invasion, that's okay, because your job is not to be popular. Your job is to be a parent, and you often will have to protect them from themselves even because as kids grow, right, they don't, they don't necessarily have the level of discernment and understanding that they need, right? They have to be taught that. They have to be shown that over time. I would say privilege FaceTime over screen time, right? So the default setting of the TV ought to be off, not on, right? So if you're not watching TV, don't just leave the TV on. And if uh, you need to, set some limits on yourself, right? Say we're not going to watch more than a couple of hours of TV a day, or we're going to have a day where we don't watch TV or we don't do anything like that at all. In fact, one of the things that I'm going to tell you about next week is that we, of course, restrict our children um, in terms of their technology and media consumption. And there are days where, like, today is a iPad or a, a device-free time, right? And so we want to make sure that uh, that 
that we that we privilege FaceTime over screen time. So don't let the electronic thing be your babysitter, right? There are times when you may need to do that or whatever, but don't don't let that become the thing that babysits your kids and occupies their time. You occupy their time. Engage them in some activity or play or give them a job to do around the house, something like this. So don't be afraid to unplug uh, as well. So all this is not designed to make you afraid, but to help you from being naive, right? So we ought to be skeptical uh, about some of these things. Just because it's new doesn't make it good. And so we ought to be skeptical about content. Just because something says it's educational don't mean, doesn't mean that it is. Just because something says it's safe doesn't mean that it is. And just because a bunch of people are doing it doesn't mean that it's good to do. So we've got to be careful and skeptical to engage in these things with a critical eye. Not a not a, a fearful eye, but definitely one that recognizes there are subtle and often easy to miss um, dangers that exist if we're not if we're not careful. And the last thing I want to say, I, I kind of said this last week, is that your example is the most important, right? What I do as my, as a father with my my sons uh, is going to be the most important thing in their understanding of technology consumption and media consumption because they're going to learn how to be from me. Now, of course, I'm not the only influence, but I ought to be the primary one, and you are too. So learn to set limits on your own self if necessary, right? Don't don't carry the phone to the table. Reserve that time for FaceTime. When your kids get off from school, right, ask them how their day was instead of, you know, immediately giving them a device or something like this. So uh, next week, as I said, we're going to talk about some practical tips, like some specific apps that can be used for filtering content and some different devices that can uh, that you might could use to limit limit screen time and different things like this. So that'll be next week. I appreciate you watching today. I hope this was helpful to you. If you happen to be around the bottom area and you don't have a church, we'd love for you to join us uh, on Sunday. We have Sunday school at, beginning at 930 for all ages. 1045, we do a corporate worship service. Uh, so we'd love for you to join us there. You can find out information about those services and where we're located on our Facebook page or by visiting fbcbonham.com. Of course, you can always call the office here. That, that number, again, is on the website or on the Facebook page, or you can email us, contact us through Facebook, uh, and ask any questions that you have. So next week, we'll plan to see you at 9 again. In the meantime, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you, and we'll see you soon.